Okay, so here we are, 2.3 C in College Algebra, and we are continuing on with systems of linear equations and two variables, and this particular part is page 130, solution by elimination. Okay, now it does say, like I said earlier, a second algebraic method called the elimination is frequently an easier method to use uh, to solve a system of linear equations. All right, so... Uh, I'm just going to continue reading here. The elimination method is based on rewriting one or both of the equations in an equivalent form that allows us to eliminate one of the variables. So what we're doing is we are trying to go in, I, like I had mentioned before, when you are solving for two variables, like an x and a y, you must have, if you're going to solve for x and y, you must have the same number of equations as you do variables. So in order to solve this, we have to have two, two equations because we're trying to solve for two variables. If I had an x, y, and a z, I'd have to have three equations, which we'll get to doing some of those later. If we want to solve one of these variables, if we want to find out what the x is or what the y is, your choice, then we um, can eliminate one of the equations and one of the variables so that we're only dealing with one equation and one variable. So that means one of these variables, either the y or the x, has to disappear and one of the equations has to disappear or both of them have to disappear and we have some random one equation um, with one variable in it so that we can solve. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to eliminate a variable and eliminate the equations so that we only have one equation and one variable. Okay, so the way we do this is, again, this is review, and I shouldn't have to go a lot of depth into it, but I know the way math works. When you don't use math on a regular basis, almost daily, you start forgetting it. So I'm going to assume you're going to need to be reminded. So what we're going to do is we are going to add these two equations together. Now, if I added these two equations together, I would get 7x plus 2y equals 16. All right, notice what I have. I have one equation, but I still have two variables. So that doesn't work. So I'm going to have to adjust one or both of the equations so that when I add each one of these columns together, one of these variables goes away either the x or the y. I don't care. Okay, it doesn't matter. So let's do that. And so let's see what happens here. If I want to do that, if I want to add up my columns and make something disappear, then that's, then for example, if I want to make the y's disappear, that means I'm going to have to add 4 plus a negative 4, because 4 plus negative 4 is 0, zero y's is zero, so th that means my y's will go away. Well, how do I make this into a negative four so that when I add these, they go away? Very easy. I multiply the entire equation by two. So let's rewrite this. Three x plus four y equals 10, and let's distribute that to eight x minus four y equals 12. That's my new equation. This equation here is the exact same equation I have here. Okay, It's just everything is a little bit bigger here. They're both equal to each other. This side here is equal to this side. Okay, They may be other numbers that are equal to each other, but as long as they're equal, we're fine with our equation. Alright, so now let's add these. We have uh, 11x, these give me 0, equals 22, divide by 11, divide by 11, my x equals 2. I just found one of my variables, okay, by reducing the number of equations to one equation, 11x equals 22. One of my variables disappeared, and, one of my, I'm, and I combined these two equations here into one. So now x equals 2. All I have to do now is take this x equals 2 and put it here or here and solve for y. So let's say I pick the top one. doesn't matter which one you, you pick. 
Okay, 6 plus 4y equals 10. I have one equation, one variable, which is good. y equals 1. All right, so you have to, when you show me the answer, you have to tell me what x is, you have to tell me what y is, you can't just say 2 and 1, or you have to put it this way, because then I automatically know that x is always first, y is always second. Okay, so there's your answer. So I'm going to give you the um, chance to do this on your own to read examples 7 and 8, which are story problems. They're fairly simple. They're uh, showing you methods to getting two different equations there, and then using elimination in order to solve those. And, well, I guess number or 7 is using um, elimination and Example number eight is using substitution. And again, you can use either one. It doesn't really matter. You just choose which one you want to use. Now, in the homework, they may ask you to use only elimination or only substitution to give you an opportunity to do both of those and get used to being able to do both of those. So, bottom of page 132, just some vocabulary dependent and inconsistent systems. So, looking at the top of page 133, we have three different options there. If you have two intersecting lines that intersect at one point, they have a unique solution. Unique means basically one. It comes from the word una, unicycle, um, which means one. Um, B, they have the same line. That means that the two equations that you're looking at um, are identical. They may not look the same. For example, one may be 2x plus 4y equals 12, and the other one may be x plus 2y equals 6. So even though they look different, they're the same equation. Okay, the only difference is this one is half. All Each of the numbers in front of the x and the y and over here are half this, okay? which doesn't change what the line looks like. It's going to be the exact same line. So basically what we have is one line lying on, whoops, lying on the other line. So all of the solutions are going to be um, workable. Okay, that means we have an infinite number of solutions. Any number you put in for x and y that make this true are also going to make that true. Okay, so that means when you have an infinite number of solutions, it is called a dependent system. Now, there are going to be problems that you get where um, you have the, oops, let's get a graph here, where you have a graph, and one of the lines looks like that, and one of the lines looks like that. They're parallel. They never cross. There's no solution um, that works, because the only time you can get a solution is when the two lines have at least one intersection, okay, and usually one intersection. So if they're parallel lines, they have no solution, and they're called an inconsistent solution, okay? So that's pretty much what we're looking at as far as dependent and inconsistent. Dependent means they're on top of each other, and every point that's in common with one is in common with the other, and parallel lines have nothing in common, and they're considered inconsistent. Okay, so let's look at number 9, example 9a, and we are going to um, use elimination, and we are going to get rid of the, um, well, we're going to get rid of let's say, the y's. So we're going to multiply this top equation by negative 3. And that gives me negative 6x plus 9y equals negative 12. And we're going to leave the bottom one alone because we're trying to get rid of the y's. And when we do that, that gives me 0. That gives me 0. 
and that gives me 0. So 0 equals 0. That means that all my variables disappeared. I do not have a variable, but I have a true statement. So my um, variables disappear, and I have a true statement, 0 equals 0. That means that I have an infinite number of solutions, which means that in my graph, one of the lines lies on top of the other. Okay, so the equation of this line and the equation of this line are the same line. So when you're doing your work and you're doing elimination and you your variables disappear and you end up with 0 equals 0, which is a true statement, then this is the case. Okay, lines are on top of each other. All right, let's do part B here. And I have 2x minus 3y equals 4 and 6x minus 9y equals 36. Okay, one of the things I notice when I teach this is a lot of you have had all of this stuff before, but since you've never had me as a teacher, you're getting it from a different perspective, which can be good, which can be bad, but um, hopefully um, it's close enough to the way that you've been taught um, in, pa in the past that everything kind of works together for you. All right, so let's look at B. Let's do it the exact same way. I'm going to try to get this to be a positive 9 so I can add it to that. So let's do the same thing here. Multiply this by a, po by a negative 3 so that it becomes positive. So that gives me negative 6x plus 9y equals negative 12. And we'll leave that one alone. All right, so let's see what we have here. We add those two together. Those disappear. Those also disappear. And that equals 24. So we get 0 equals 24. All right, so what happened here? My variables again disappeared. My x and my y disappeared. But the difference is this over here is a true statement. This over here is a false statement. So whenever your variables disappear and you get a true statement, the lines are on top of each other. On the right-hand side, whenever the variables disappear, variables disappear and you get a false statement, the lines are parallel to each other. They do not cross. They have nothing in common. Okay, So um, the system is inconsistent because of that, and this one is dependent because of that. So anyway, example number 10, I'm going to let you uh, look at that and work out of the, work your way through that, um, just because, again, I'm just following the examples that they do and kind of helping explain things along the way. But if you know how to do the elimination and the substitution, and very, very key, you're able to know what to do here when you don't get just one answer, okay? That should help you out, and that's it for Lesson 2.3.